Shakespeare's production of Macbeth. We would love to know more about our patrons, so please consider filling out the audience survey included in your program. As a thank you for your participation, you'll be entered into a drawing for a vacation package to Sandy Valley Ranch. You may also indicate on the survey if you'd like to sign up for our mailing list so you can hear about exciting events such as our October Shakespeareans production at Cafe Stritch and our 2020 season announcement gala. We hope you'll also join us for our production of The White Snake, which runs here at Sanborn Park and Repertory with Macbeth through Labor Day weekend. You can find a performance calendar in your program or at www.svshakespeare.org. Please turn off your cell phones so as not to disturb your fellow patrons or drain your batteries in this zone of limited reception. Tonight's show will have one 15-minute intermission, during which concessions will be available at the tents where you received your tickets. Restrooms are just across the footbridge where you entered and to the left. In the unlikely event of an emergency, our staff will direct you to our evacuation area across the footbridge and up to the open grove area you passed when you arrived. And now, please enjoy William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Done. 
What he hath lost, Noble Macbeth hath won. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. Sister, where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I, a right thee witch, the rough fetter onion cried. Behind. 
Thanks for your pains. But do you not hope that your children shall be kings when those that gave the thing of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? Thou trusted home me, yet and kindle you unto the crown, besides the thane of Cawdor. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill. It cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I, I am thane of Cawdor. Good. That suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair, make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. Look how our partner's wrapped. If chance will have me king, why, good chance may crown me without my stir. New honors come upon him like our strange garments. Leave not to their mold, but with the aid of use. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Uh, give me your favor. My Dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Uh, kind gentlemen, your pains are registered when every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Think of one more has a chance to end. At more time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts to each other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Uh, come, my friends. Is the execution done on Cardor? Are not those in commission yet returned? My liege, they are not yet come back. But I have spoken of one who saw him die, who did report that, very frankly, he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like a lady. Oh, worthiest cousin! The sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Would thou hast less deserved that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness' part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. A noble Banquo, that has no less deserved, nor more be known let no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee, and hold thee to my heart. There if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenteous joy is wanton in fullness, seem to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Uh, sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are nearest, know we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, <laughs> whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, <laughs> which honor must not unaccompanied invest him only, but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers. Uh, from hence to Inverness, and bind us farther to the rest is labor which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cardinal. The Prince of Cumberland. There's a step on which I must fall down or else, or leap, or in my way it lies. The stars hide your fires. Not like see my black and deep desires. True worthy Banquo, he is full so valiant, and in his commendations I am fed. Let's after him, whose care has gone before to bid us welcome. And Cawdor, it 
shalt be what thou art promised. Oh. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, thou wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Oh, hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. But what is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Oh, thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who wert so would have been formed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. One of my fellows, at the speed of him, who almost dead for breath, and scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. <laughs> the raven himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here, and fill me from crown to toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctuous visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering minister, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. <gasps> Great God! <laughs> Worthy God, or greater than both by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future and the instant. <laughs> My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Uh, tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. <laughs> Sometime is our trouble, which still we thank as love. All our service and every point twice done and then done double. We're poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad with your majesty loads our house. For those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. But where is the fate of Caudle? We coursed him at the heel and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well, and his great love, sharp as his spur, hath helped him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Give me your hand. Conduct me to mine host. I love him highly. Why your leave, hostess? <laughs> could tremble at the consequence and catch with his surcease success. Of this blow might be the be-all and the end-all here. Here upon this bank and shoal of time, keep jump the life to come. Is 
cases we still have judgment. He's here in double trust. First, as I'm his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan had borne his faculty so meek, and hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues would plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. Pity, like the naked cherubim, coursed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye. Tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to print the size of my intent. Only vaulting ambition, which overleaps itself. How now? What news? He is almost slept. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you're not. He has. We will proceed no further with this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which would be worn now, in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk, wherein you dressed yourself? Had it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would? Wait, pretty peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to me more than what you were, you would be so much more of a man. Nor time, nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves. And that their fitness does unmake you. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless thumbs and dashed the brains out had I so sworn as you have done to this. We should fail. We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbic only. When in swinish sleep their trenchant natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great well? Will it not be received when we have marked with blood the sleepy tomb of his own chamber and, and use their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive another, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? Sword. Who's there? A friend. What, you're not yet at rest? 
the king to bed. He hath been in unusual pleasure and sent forth great guards to your office. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you, they have shown some truth. I think not of them. <laughs> Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, uh, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kind pleasure. If you shall cleave to my consent, when tis, I shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it. Close the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you.
globs have burned and sleep in their poor corridors shall sleep no more. Men shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? My worthy vein, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go. Come, carry them and smear the sleepy groves with blood. I can't go no more. I'm afraid to think what I've done. Look at it again. I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Well, give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. It's the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. Which is that knocking? Indeed, if a man were a porter of Hellgate, he should have all turning the key. <laughs> and knock, knock, knock! Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come in time. Knock, knock, knock! Who's there in the other devil's name? who committed treason enough, for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. <laughs> no. Come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, knock! Who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor come hither for stealing out of a French hose. <laughs> come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. <laughs> Primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. I'm on! I'm on! I pray you, remember the poor sir. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? The faith, sir! We were carousing for the second cock yeah, and to drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mary, sir, a nose painting, sleep, and urine. <laughs> Betchery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, the body takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and it takes him off. It persuades him, <laughs> and it disheartens him, it makes him stand still. Mm -hmm. Then not stand still. <laughs> Therefore, in conclusion, equivocates him in sleep, and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave him the lie last night. That it did, sir. Is thy master stirring? 
Our not king has awaked him. Good Very morrow, fast. noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring? What does he say? Not yet. He did command me to call Titan on him. I've almost took the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, which is my limited service. Goes the king hence today? He does. He did appoint so. And the night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down, and as they say, lamentings heard in the air. Strange screams of death. The obscure bird clamored the livelong night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. It was a rough night. No! Horror! 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 What's the matter? What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece most sacrilegious murder. What did she say? Majesty? Uh, approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See and speak yourself. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and, and treason! Donald Bainey! Big Will Malcolm, awake! Up! Up and see the great tomb's image. Malcolm! Banquo! Ring the bell! What's the business? That such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house! Oh, speak! Speak! Gentlemen, it's not for you to hear what I can speak! Big Will, our royal masters, murder! Woo! What, alas, in our house! Too cruel anywhere! Oh, dear job, I pray thee contradict thyself and say it is not so! But I but died an hour before this trance, I lived a blessed time! For from this instant there is nothing serious in mortality! All is but toys, renown and grace is dead. No. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. No. Your royal father is murdered. No. Oh! By who? Those of his chamber, as it seems, had done it. No. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. No. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. And I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man! With the expedition of my violent love outrun the pause of reason. Who could refrain from her heart to love? And in that heart, courage to make his love known. Oh, help me! Oh. Look to the lady! Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What should be spoken here, where our fate hidden in our hold may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears are not yet fruit. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. And when we have our naked frailties hid, that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and this, against the undivulged pretense I fight, a treasonous malice. And so do I, so oh. all. Let us briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well, well, well. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. I'll to England. To Ireland, I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles. The near in blood, the near in bloody. This murderous shaft is shot, hath not yet lighted. And our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore, to horse. Let us not be dainty of feet taking the shift way. There's warrants in that theft, which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Please, for in ten, I can't remember well. 
within which volume of time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night a trifled former knowing. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling land. Is it night's predominant, or day shame that darkness is the face of earth entombed when living light should kiss it? Tis unnatural, even as a deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falc, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousy now hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against <clears throat> obedience as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they ate each other. They did so. But here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth had slain, they were suborned. But Malcolm and Donalbane, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them the suspicion of the deed. Then, tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He's already named, and gone to Scone to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carry, home field. Would you to Scone? No, cousin, I'll to fight. Well, well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done then. Adieu. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, Father. God's venisons go with you, and with those that would make good of bad, and friends of foes. bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasite, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, are you to your horse, that's you, that you return at night. Go splayance with you. Aye, my good lord. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. God be with you. A word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gates. Bring them before us. We thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears and Banquo stick deep. In her royalty of nature reigns that. And 
to that dauntless temper of her mind, she hath a wisdom that doth guide her valor to act in safety. There is none but she whose me I do fear. Under her, my genius is rebuked. The said Mark Antony's was my Caesar. She chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to her. Then, prophet-like, they held her mother to the lion of kings. Well, on my head they placed a fruitless crown. They put a barren scepter in my grip. Thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand. No son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them the gracious Duncan have I murdered. Put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them. And my eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings. Come fate into the mystic champion me to the mutterance. Who's there? Now go to the door and stay there till we call. Was not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, Your Highness. Well then, now, have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was she, in the times past, which held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self? You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience? so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good woman and her issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. Aye, in the catalogue you go for men. As hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shoes and water rugs and demi-wolves are cleft all by the name of dogs. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world hath so incensed that I am reckless what I do despite the world. And I another, so weary with disaster and tugged to his fortune that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on it. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So she is mine. <clears throat> No, I could, with bare face to power, sweep her from my sight and bid my will vouch it. Yet I must not. For certain friends that are both hers and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail her fall, whom I myself struck down. And thence it is that I to your assistance make the fun, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall. Perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour, at most, I will command you where to plant yourselves. Fleance, her son, that keeps her company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his mother's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. Call upon you anon. We are resolved, my lord. Call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. And quote, thy soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Not had. All spent. Where our desire is got. Without content. It is safer to be that which we destroy, and by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now? My lord, why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died but then they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. You've scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. Let that frame of things disjoint. 
joint. Both the world suffer. Ere yeah, we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice, domestic, foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. Come. Gentle, my lord. Seek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I love you. So I pray thee. Thou know'st that Banquo and her flayance lives. But in them nature's copy's not a turn. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. And be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? The innocent of the knowledge, there is John. How marvelous are my words, but hold me still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So, prithee, go with me. Confined. 
hung into doubts and fears. I quote safe. Behind my good lord, safe in a ditch she bides, with twenty trenchy gashes on her head. She would have brought the serpent mice. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we will clear ourselves a gate. <laughs> <laughs> my royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion weight on appetite, and health on both. Yeah. Here had we now our country's on a roof, for the graced person of our Banquo presence, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. Her absence, sir, lays blame upon her promise. Please it your highness to grace us with your royal company. Uh, table's full. There is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? What, my good lord? That's not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise as high as it's well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is off in thus and, and hath been from his youth. Uh, uh, pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon the thought, you will again be well. Are you a man? I am a bold one. They did look upon that which might appall the devil. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Why do you make such faces? Can you sit there? Behold! Look! Well, what say you? What can I? If thou canst not speak to! What? Quite unmanned and folly. If I stand here, I see her! I, for shame. What hath been shed ere now? The time hath been that when the brains were out, the thing would die, and there an end. But now they rise again, with twenty mortal murders on their crowns, and push us my stool. My noble lord, your royal friends do lack you. Almost at odds with warning. 
Which is which? I'll say stuff that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding. Did you send to him, sir? I hear it, by the way. But I will send to him. There's not a one of them that in his house I'll keep a soul and feed. Or two more months. The times I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak. Now I invent to know by the worst means, the worst. And the blood stepped in so far that should I wait no more? Turning of his teeth is to go on. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come. Go to sleep. Strange and self abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. speeches have but with your thoughts, which can interpret further. Only I say things have been strangely born. <laughs> the gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late, whom you may say, if it please you, Fleon's killed, for Fleon's fled. One must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donald Bain to kill their gracious father? Down with fact, how it did greet me death. Did he not straight in pious rage the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was not that nobly done? I am wisely too, for it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. So that I say he has borne all things well. And I do think that had he Duncan's sons under his key, as if it please heaven, he shall not, they should find what would kill father. So I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant, holds the due of birth, lives on in the English court, and has received the most pious Edward. Thither Macduff has gone to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland and warlike Seward, that by the help of these we may again give to our tables meat, sleep to our nights, free from our feasts and banquets, bloody knives, do faithful homage, and receive free honors. All which we pine for now. Sent he to Macduff? He did. Some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to this, our suffering country, under a hand accursed. I'll send my prayers with him. Thirty-one swans! 
woman yet! A seventh! I'll see no more! No! And yet an eighth appears. But there's a glass which shows me many more. I see it's true. But a blood daughter of Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for hers. What? Is this so? Where are they? Gone! Let this pernicious hour stand by accursed in the calendar. But a coming went out there! What's your grace's will? I saw you the weird sisters. No, my lord. Why came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Do you see the galloping of a horse? Who was it came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Time thou anticipates my dread exploits. To crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. Madam. He had none. To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion, and his titles in the place from whence himself does fly. He loves us not. All is a fear, and nothing is a love. As little as the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cause, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the seasons. <laughs> I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves, when we hold rumor from what we fear and know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. I take my leave of you. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Blessing upon you. Honest men. 
then the liars and squares are fools. But there are liars and squares enough to beat the honest men and hang up them. <laughs> If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If he were not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. <laughs> Bless you, fair dame. I am not here known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a holy man's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. To fight you thus, methinks I am too savage. To do worse to you were fell cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Oh, whither should I fly? I have done no harm. Oh. What are these faces? Where is your husband? Hope. In no place so unsanctified for such as thou mayest find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou oh. shag-eared oh. oh. What, you egg? Young fry, Fill up the cistern of my lust. 
and my desire or cottage of impediments would obey that did oppose my will. Better death than such a one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. To have been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. There grows in my most ill composed affection such a staunch that's avarice that were I king I should I should cut off the nobles from their lands, desire his jewels in this other's house, and my more having would be as a sauce to make me hunger more. This avarice sticks to with more pernicious root than the summer seeming lust. It hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet fear not. Scotland hath poisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable with other graces weighed. But I have not the king becoming graces as justice, verity, Temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, loneliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them. If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No. Not fit to live. Nation miserable. Your royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that bore the oftener upon her knees than on her feet died every day she lived. Fare thee well. These Evils thou repeats upon thyself hath banished me from Scotland. Hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish with death. By many of these trains is sought to win me into his power. Yet, modest wisdom plucks me from ever credulous haste. But, God above, deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself to thy direction and unspeak mine own detraction. Here, to jur the taints and blames I laid upon myself as strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn. Scarcely have coveted what was mine own. No time broke my faith. Would not betray the devil to his fellow into life, no less in truth than life. And first of all, speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine, and my poor country's to command. Now, both together, in the chance of goodness, be like a warrant of quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. <laughs> well, more or not. You see who comes here. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. Is that Scotland? Where is it? Alas. Poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made and not marked. Where violent sorrows seem the modern ecstasy. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doll hiss the speaker. Each minute deems a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children. Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. 
know. They were well at peace when I did leave home. Be not reluctant of your speech, how goes it? When I came hither to transport the tidings, which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, which was to my belief witness the rather that I saw the tyrant's power of foot. Now is the time of hell. Be it their comfort, we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good Seward and ten thousand men, an older and better soldier none than Christendom gives out. Would that I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words pertain to you alone. If they be mine, keep them not from me. Quickly, let me have them. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. I guess I did. <laughs> Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes are savagely slaughtered. My, my children? Help to. Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from that my, my wife. I have said. Man. I shall be so, but I must also feel it as a man. What did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful McDonald, we are all struck for thee. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. My gentle heaven, cut short all intermissions. Front to front. Bring bells, this fiend of Scotland and myself. Then my sword's length set him. Be escape. Heaven forgive him, too. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Right for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. 
seek what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her night out upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in a most fast sleep. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You may to me, and tis most meet you should, neither to you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Will you, as she comes, since her very guise, and upon my life fast asleep? How came she by that light? I stood by her. She has led by her continually to serve a man. Her eyes are open, but their scents are shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her to continue in this quarter of an hour. Oh, yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out, this spot. Out, say. One, two, I think it's time to do it. Hell is murky. Fine, my lord, fine. A soldier and a beard? What need we fear? Who knows it? when none can call our power to account. Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The thing of wife had a wife? Where is she now? <laughs> Why will these hands never be clean? No more of that. My lord, no more of that. You are all with that starting. Go to. Go to, you have known what you should not. She has said what she should not, I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she does know. <sighs> Yet here's the smell of blood still. All oh, the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. are abroad. Unnatural deeds do lead to unnatural troubles. Infected minds will to their deaf pillows discharge their secrets. Or needs she the divine and the physician. Come. God forgive us all. Look after her, remove from her the means of all annoyance, and still keep eyes upon her. So good night. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, the doctor. Burn 
woods shall we meet them? That way they are coming. Who knows if Donald may be with his brother? For certain, sir, he is not. I have a file of all the gentry. There is Seward's son and many unruff youths that even now protest the first of manhood. But does the tyrant Great Dunzel name he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad, others that lesser hate him to call it valiant fury. Now does he feel his secret murder sticking to his hands? Now does he feel his title hang loose about him? Well, march we on to give obedience where it is truly owed. Make we our march towards Burnham.
their unsure hopes for late. But certain issue, strokes must arbitrate. Towards which, advance the war! The cry is still they come! Ah! What is that noise? It's the cry of women, my lord! I've almost forgot the taste of fears. <coughs> Time has been, my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I have supped full with horrors. Direness, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts, cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The, the queen! Oh, my lord! Is dead! She should have died hereafter. There would have been time for... Such a word. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. recorded time and all our yesterdays lighted fools the way to dusty death I saw, but knew not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I did say my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon, methought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me endure your wrath if it be not so. Within this three mile may you see it coming. I say a moving grow. Thou speakest false upon the next tree, shall thou hang alive to famine clean thee! If thy speech be sooth, I pull in resolution, begin to doubt the equivocation of a fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane. Arm. Oh, I'm a doubt. If this which she vouches does appear, there is no flying hence, nor tarrying here. Ring the alarm bell! Oh, wind. Come rack! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Now near enough. Your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. You, for the uncle. So with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Macduff, we shall take upon us what else remains to do. Very well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. <laughs> He that was not a woman born. Such a one am I to feel a nun. What is thy name? Not be afraid to hear it. No, but I'll call myself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself cannot pronounce a title more hateful to my No. No more fear. Thou I support a tyrant, but with my sword I'll prove the lie thou speakest! Ah! Thou was born of woman! What swords I smile at? Weapons laughter! Scorn! Brandished by a man that's of a woman born! That way the noise is. Tyrant! Show thy face! Thou be a slave, but with no stroke of mine. My wife and children scarce will haunt me still. This way, my lord! The castle's gently rendered! The tyrant's people on both sides to fight! 
the noble thing to bravely in the war, the day itself almost professes yours, and little is to do. We've met with foes that strike beside us. Enter, sir, the castle. Died. 
Then he is dead. Aye, and brought off the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Had he his hurts before? Aye, on the front. Why the God soldier be he? Had I as many sons as I have heirs, I would not wish them to a fairer death. He's worth more sorrow in that I'll spend for him. So God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Hail, King of Scotland, for so thou art. The time is free! Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth the earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad have fled the snares of watchful tyranny, and producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen who, as tis thought by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we shall perform and measure time and place. So thanks to all at once and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at scar. Hey! 